month. North Korea's latest test missile flew over Hokkaido in northern Japan on Friday and landed in the Pacific about 2,000 kilometers to the east, the Japanese government said. Let me now introduce my colleague Fatia Nur with so much more information on what's making headlines on the international front. Good to see you, Fatia. Good to see thanks you, for Michelle. joining us on uh, Weekend Thank at you. One. So, North Korea has been making headlines with this uh, missile launcher. This is the second one in over a month to pass uh, or fly over Japan. Yeah. What is brewing between these two countries? It's a very interesting situation, actually. You see, North Korea, since 1984, they've carried out at least 150 missiles and nuclear tests, all right? Mm -hmm. So it's something they've always wanted to do. Just this year only, they've launched 14 times. All right, so there is a little bit of war brewing between North Korea, Japan, and the United States. Right, right. I mean, and the United States says um, its patience is wearing thin, you know, after the first missile launch that was uh, earlier this month. What could that be signaling to in terms Very of world order? The fact that you've said that. Some, uh, the president of US, Donald Trump, the other day said the world is going to see fire and fury because of what North Korea is doing. Right. So the United uh, Nations Security Council, um, they had imposed very tough sanctions on, uh, the, on, um, on North Korea for posing these uh, nuclear threats, saying that it's not the right thing they're doing. So in, because of that, North Korea is going against what the UN is saying and also trying to damage uh, Japan by saying they're going to sink Japan. Very interesting development from North Korea. Right. I mean, there has been sanctions, however, uh, mm. on uh, North Korea. This doesn't seem to be affecting them in terms of uh, continuing with their missile launches. What kind of um, uh, sanctions, however, have been put uh, on this country? All right, like Pyongyang, you know that Korea has been separated from, uh, it's now North Korea and South Korea. Right. These are two different countries, and it's because of war that they had in 1950. They had a pact, a truce, that they did not come together as a peace truce. So that is going to bring the country down, mm -hmm. specifically. Right. Well, many Kenyans will be asking, how is this going to affect us? I mean, it, it, it is an international issue, yeah. it is a global issue. How is it likely to affect um, the global economy and global peace as a whole? You see, it's threatening a country like the United States, which is a superpower when it comes to economy itself. Mm -hmm. So when the economy goes down, the whole the whole world is in is in a sh uh, situation. So it's not something that can be talked about, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll keep uh, keeping an eye on uh, what's going on in uh, North Korea. But let's move on to China now, where China's ambassador to Washington has called on the United States to refrain from making threats over North Korea, which a day earlier launched another missile over Japan into the Pacific Ocean. Ambassador Chui Tink and I told reporters that the United States should be doing more over the issue. President Donald Trump and others in the United States and beyond have urged China to increase diplomatic and economic pressure on its communist ally to help resolve the standoff over North Korea's weapons programs. China fought alongside North Korea during the 1950 to 1953 Korean War in which Chinese leader Mao Zedong lost his eldest son. Now, a time-lapse footage of uh, Typhoon Dok Suri was uh, filmed by a social media user as a storm made landfall in Vietnam on Friday. The Facebook user was trying to catch a glimpse of the eye of the storm on video but missed. Dok Suri is becoming the country's most powerful storm in years, killing six people. More than 5,000 houses were submerged, 19 collapsed, and nearly 24,000 houses damaged. Take a look. Now, we journalists have the same duty all over the world, but a video showing how American journalists cover hurricane news has opened quite a debate. Take a look.
get some kind of break through here with these absolutely unrelenting wins. You can see it for yourself. We're being hit by a pretty significant fan from Harvey as it is making landfall here about 50 miles, as you mentioned, south of where we are. We're here in Port Lavaca. There is Lavaca Bay uh, just in front of me here, and that storm surge from Harvey is pushing water from the bay this way. We're kind of teetering here. We've been very steady, very consistent with 50, 60 mile per hour winds, gust occasionally to hurricane force uh, here in Corpus Christi. And this may be pain. They act as human weather balloons. That's a wind gust right there. Well, that's that's a wind gust. Weather balloons tethered to whatever they can clutch. Sometimes somebody clutches them. These are probably the. <laughs> these are the. <laughs> I've got the Nassau County Sheriff holding me onto the boardwalk. Some were literally covered with Hurricane Sandy. Yeah, I'm going to let you kind of take some of the sand off of your face there. Somehow some sand got in my mouth. But that was the least of their problems. Hey, Rick, get to safer ground. Glenn, get back behind the building. I don't want you blown away. Or worse, washed away. Timing those waves out, watching that water move in. He's been in these situations a lot, by the way. Right. Another rogue wave got a CBS team. Okay, whoa. Whoa, hey, hey guys. Whoa. Oh my God. Wow. Meanwhile, beach erosion swallowed a Fox reporter's foot. Not look good. Oh, excuse me. Oh. The, uh, it looks like the sandy walkway out to the beach. Oh. Uh, it's actually got my, my boot stuff. Oh, my gosh. Uh, CNN's Jason Carroll stumbled on a scuba diver prepared for flooding. High rises don't mix. Uh-oh, we just had some glass breaking out here. We just had glass breaking. For some, it was just an excuse to horse around behind a reporter. Don't go out. You probably can't get out of it later. All uh, right, it's uh, quite interesting that it's never easy bringing the news. But uh, Fatia, there's been a conversation as to, you know, safety measures, you know, with reporters, uh, yeah. especially going out to the field. Uh, many of them didn't look they had they, like they had any, you know, safety or protective gear. Uh, your thoughts on what's been happening there? I think it's very interesting. You see, many journalists uh, find you want to go there when the action is actually right, the adrenaline. Exactly, the adrenaline. You want to show people what's happening there. So... I've seen that debate online. A lot of journalists think it's good to be there okay. whenever it actually happens. But you see, some, something like the storm, you don't know what angle it's coming from. You, don't, you can't control it. So you don't know if it's going to come pick you or what exactly. Well, I mean, we've seen a few there literally being swept, swept over away, by the yeah. water, some having their feet stuck. Some, I, would, I don't know. Would, would, would you be up for an assignment like mm. that? I think so. <laughs> I find it exciting, actually. You know, the just, adrenaline, the rush. Thank God, you don't have storms and hurricanes <laughs> in Africa. Yes, but uh, interesting developments there. Yeah. All right, let's head over to Rohingya Naza. Hundreds of uh, Rohingya refugees have made their